And let me ask you, uh, Joseph Tatner, how long did it take your wife to become a legal citizen? Well, you know, Monday, it's been a year since we changed her status. I brought her here on a fiancé visa. And it took a year just to get notified that now she's qualified for a green card. I, I've got people that are telling me it's taken 10 to 15 years to become a legal citizen. And this is, you know, 10% of the Asian community is illegal. And they have people that are willing to take care of them. So our laws are broken. But if you think that amnesty is the answer, here's the problem. The day after amnesty is passed, the same problem exists. So that's not the answer. And if you think our rules are too draconian here in the United States, look at the rules in Mexico. You cannot go down to Mexico and protest waving a sign in English. It's illegal. You cannot go down there illegally. They will deport your butt immediately. Now, the reason that people come here is because they want a better life, and frankly, they get a lot of freebies. End the freebies, and they will self-deport. Make it easy for real legal citizens to come here and do it the right way, and they will do it that way. Now, I've written the contract with America 2010. It's on my website, tatner.com. The fifth principle says, we will protect the rights of all citizens and legal immigrants by enforcing laws against illegal immigration. It goes on, I have written legislation for ending the anchor baby problem by giving them a certificate of live birth instead of a birth certificate, and only a birth certificate will be allowed to get real benefits for being here, such as free hospital care, et cetera, et cetera. Except, you know, so, take a look at that and you'll see where I stand. Craig Lake, uh, the, the first thing we need to do is secure our borders. Uh, without secure borders, there's no issue that we can deal with as it pertains to immigration. Uh, we need to stop federal funding and, and government programs for illegal citizens. Uh, you know, we're providing education, we're providing health care, we're providing all these services. Emergency, life-threatening services, I definitely think we should take care of. But other than that, uh, we have to stop providing these services. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have to really look at what the problem is. And the problem is is that Mexico has a corrupt government. Uh, they have a very damaging government and the people are, are trying to get out of that situation. We don't necessarily have a ton of people coming here because they feel America is a better opportunity. They're trying to escape their own uh, form of terror. And what this illegal immigration is actually providing is it's providing like a pressure valve release. And it's not giving the Mexican people the chance to address the issue that they have in their own country, which is this corruption. So we're actually doing them a disservice by allowing uh, this, this corruption to continue in Mexico. We need to secure our border and let the Mexican people stand up and defend their country. But as long as we allow them to keep uh, you know, coming into our country, many of them don't identify themselves as Americans. If you ask them, they pledge their allegiance to Mexico. They're not here because they believe in America. And we need to secure our borders, stop providing these services, uh, and, and crack down also on employers. But th this is all state stuff, the rest of it. I mean, the state needs to crack down on employers who are employing um, illegal immigrants and uh, also send back criminals and people in our prison system. So, but that's all state. Craig Lake. Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley, I believe I'm the only person on the panel that actually voted to construct a fence on the border, which I did. I can't. I do not believe you could be a sovereign nation unless you have secure borders. But our employers should be held responsible, but until we put in place a system that employers can call and check and see whether the Social Security card is legit that they're getting, it's very difficult to hold the employers responsible. There is no doubt that we have good immigration legislation on the books. How about we have a little bit of enforcement? There's no doubt that the system is broken. I'm opposed to amnesty, but you can have 50 states passing 50 different laws uh, uh, regard regarding immigration. It needs to come from the federal government. The United States Congress needs to stop this partisan bickering, sit down in a bipartisan way, and figure out what we're going to do to protect American citizens, secure our borders, and make this nation safer for everybody. All of that and some, okay, so I'll make it brief. Um, I'm an employer, and I'm Michelle Fiore, and we do have a system in place. It's called E-Verify. It's not mandated, but I'll tell you what, you come to my office and look at all my files, and everyone's been E-Verified. So they're all legal, and they're working, and they're caregivers. So there is a system. You just have to take the initiative to do it. It costs money, and we do it. So there's a system to that. I'm Michelle Fiore, and we will fix this problem. Uh, the question is 
Uh, basically, going to be directed to uh, Congressman Berkeley, and then the rest of the panel will ask a question with quick to answer. Uh, as a representative for the people and the, an advocate for the veterans of Nevada, why has the current office not helped a disabled vet, a disabled vet in need, which the uh, entity in this, uh, this, that is discriminating against that vet is building our current hospital, VA hospital, as we know. Uh, the rest of the panel, I want you to answer, uh, would you help a veteran not close your door on them? Could you explain that question to me so I can answer it? Uh, the question, uh, basically, in a sense, you know, why why did your office close the door on a, on a veteran after Chuck Baker uh, published a story in his, uh, uh, as a column in uh, December 2008? Did your, your office opened the door to the veteran, and then they closed the door on the, on the veteran. Um, I, you'll have to give me the veteran's name, and we'll sit down and talk about it, but let me tell you something. Ever since I became a congresswoman, I have my Veterans Advisory Committee. We meet quarterly, four times a year. Chuck Baker and I are very, very close friends. If there's a problem, he would let me know about it. I have one woman in my office that is dedicated to veterans issues and military issues. We work for our vets, and we have a record that anybody would be proud of. If somebody fell through the cracks, our apology will go out, and we will do everything we can. And I've got people here from my office. If you share with us what transpired, uh, we'll be more than glad to remedy that situation. And I thank you for bringing it to our attention. And um, Mr. Sampson, I mentioned that um, the Girls and Boys Club is expecting me um, at 5.30. And I'm getting a little bit worried that I'm going to leave those hundreds of kids alone without my attention that I promised them. So I'll stay as long as long as I can, but if there's, um, it, I mean no disrespect to anybody, but those children can't be left waiting, and this was, a, we thought this was gonna be over at five after five. If I could have somebody in my office wait here and get the information from you, we'll take care of it to the best of our ability. Thank you for bringing it up. To answer your question, uh, I'm a disabled combat veteran. I would never slam the door on any veterans. Um, Speaking of this hospital, there's programs out there that could have helped our veterans. You know, heart, uh, helmets to hard hats. You go out there, there pro program's not working out there. I understand why is it that so many American kids are giving their hearts and souls for this country, their youth, their body parts, and then when we come home we can't take care of them? This is the highest homeless rate of veterans in the nation. I'm out there all the time. I was just, I, I don't need to talk about it. I mean, people who know me know what I do for the veterans. I don't, I don't need to tell anybody, but it makes me sick. It makes me sick what we're doing to the kids who are doing the, the most for all of us. 